Howdy y'all, the criminal historian here, and now that we've all had a good week to let the first trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6 sink in, I wanted to take a minute to look at what we've learned from it, and what's been confirmed or not based on previous assumptions, and then afterwards make a little wish list of some of my most anticipated inclusions, as well as some suggestions from you guys. So to start us off, we've been told a release window of 2025, with no other details. Now, according to people who pretend to understand more about finances than I do, there is good reason to believe the game will release sometime in early 2025, as in before the summer. But I personally think this is very, very unlikely, simply based on precedent. As far as I know, every major Grand Theft Auto release in history, at least since GTA 3, has been in the holiday window just like with other major franchises. So I'm expecting a release date of somewhere between September and October of 2025 instead, and at least in my mind, that seems far more likely. We also learned that, unfortunately, the game will not be coming to PC on launch, and instead only come to Xbox Series X and PS5, which means I need a console. Donate to my Patreon. Now this really sucks for people like me, but this isn't really all that surprising. I will no doubt end up having to buy the game at least twice, but I mean, I get to write it off of my taxes, so I really should just shut the f- Moving on to some of the things we've learned about the HD Universe version of Vice City, which we've realistically been waiting 15 years to see since the release of GTA 4. For starters, we finally know the name of this state, Leonida. Leonida? I'm not sure how to pronounce it yet, but I like it. For those who don't know, in GTA Vice City back in 2002, they chose to, for some odd reason, simply place Vice City in the real state of Florida, which is referenced numerous times in that game, even though GTA 3's Liberty City was already said to be in the fictional Liberty State, and the next game would literally be named after its fictional state, San Andreas. But now, with GTA 6, we finally get a fictional Florida with Leonida, complete with the GTA Universe version of the Florida Man meme, Leonida Man. I can't wait. We saw the return of a number of landmarks from the original Vice City, including the famous Ocean View Hotel and Vice Beach. The formerly Escobar International Airport has been renamed to Vice City International, and there is now a much bigger port for freight fittingly named Port Vice City. The map appears to have at least three separate counties in it, Kelly County, Leonard County, and Vice Dale County, which, if we use GTA 5's Blaine County as a basis, means the map will possibly be three times bigger than GTA 5's, or even bigger. If current speculations on the map are correct, then it looks like we will have Vice City, two other biggish cities, several smaller towns, and the GTA version of the Florida Keys to explore, all of which sounds so awesome, and like a realization in many ways of a lot of the features they wanted to introduce in the original Vice City, but didn't have time to, since if you didn't know, that was made in like, literally a year. There will be a return of gang culture in BC, obviously, though it hasn't yet explicitly been made clear how GTA 6 will tackle Miami's mix of gangs, especially given the controversy they ran into 20 years ago in their portrayal of the Haitian gangs. Granted, a lot has changed in 20 years, so the return of the Cuban-Haitian dynamic could still be done well, if games like Mafia 3 are anything to go off of, though admittedly, I'm not exactly the person to determine if that game's depiction was a more appropriately nuanced one. We know at least one of our protagonist's names, Lucia, but her partner's name has yet to be officially confirmed. However, given that we already knew her name was Lucia for a while and the leaks from last year, it seems safe to assume that his name is indeed Jason. Also, based on the trailer, Lucia looks like right now the main character of the two, but it could also be that we will be getting a second trailer that focuses more on his side of the dynamic since we've been led to believe thus far that they will carry equal weight in the final game. Car customization seems to be back and better than ever, social media parodies look like they might play an even bigger role than they have in the past, and animals also seem to be making a return. Hopefully this time online as well, but I won't be truly satisfied until I am playing the game, shopping for snacks at the corner store, and an actual fucking alligator walks into the store because, you know, Florida. It, Leonida. There is a decent amount more that we learned, but a lot of it is minor and or remains too ambiguous to be certain about. But there are plenty of videos out there offering deep dive analyses of the trailer, and that's not what I'm here for. I want to speculate and invite you to join me in the comments by adding anything you think the game could use that I don't bring up in this video. So for starters, what do I want? Well, and I brought this up on a live stream of the original Vice City the day of the trailer's release, but GTA Online and its legacy isn't going away anytime soon. I mean, GTA Online itself might actually be going away eventually, but the online component to Grand Theft Auto almost certainly is not. And so, given that, I think I have a pretty good idea of something that they could do which could please everybody, 
while also maybe building back some of the goodwill that was lost with the old fans over the last few years, especially since the departure of Dan Hauser, Leslie Benzies, and Laszlo. Rockstar Games, as far as I can tell, when actually developing a title themselves, have basically never put out a bad single-player experience. In fact, for 20 years, they have been one of the gold standards, if not THE gold standard in the AAA space, for putting an insane amount of care into the single-player game with games like GTA 4, 5, and Red Dead Redemption, among others. Even with GTA 5 shifting the focus to online, Red Dead 2 still came out five years later, with arguably one of the best single-player campaigns of the modern era. Which I'm still trying to get to, don't at me, it's a long story, I never played them, but I swear to god if you spoil shit in the comments. So I think there is still a good reason to believe that whatever GTA 6's single-player is, it will be incredible. Now, unlike with GTA 5, this time they have a much better idea of what they have in each hand, single-player and online. And what I am naively dreaming of is a scenario where we will get a magnificent single-player experience, but that maybe has optional online components, and, more importantly, the addition of episodic single-player DLCs like they did with GTA Online, which, again, also could have online components. So, let's imagine there are businesses, like in GTA Online, but instead of being done by your oddly out-of-place and silent online protagonist, you just manage it as Lucia or Jason, and can co-op with a friend online who controls the other protagonist. Or, if you want to have lobbies with a bunch of players still, have the single players hire people to work in their businesses in single player that then become your online characters, so that there is less of a disconnect and a more harmonious relationship in general between the single player and online components. If they did something like this, it would have the potential, as I said, to build back goodwill with the old fans, still bring in new fans, and still bring in absurd amounts of cash for the execs that would take too, so that everybody's happy, since the games industry simply is what it is at the moment. Side note, check out Moon Channel and their excellent breakdown about the modern state of the video game industry. It's a fantastic take from a lawyer who also loves video games. Building off of that, I want an evolution of the business empire building systems first introduced to us in the original GTA Vice City. We had evolutions of this in Vice City Stories, which nobody played, and in GTA 5, but we've never had something that was as fun or satisfying as, say, Mafia 3 or even, here's an old gem, the Scarface video game. I loved the ability to build your empire and live the <laughs> Scarface fantasy in those games, and Mafia 3 especially reminded me how much I wanted something like that in GTA 5. And while we had some of that, we never really had what I wanted. I want businesses that I can make absurd amounts of money off by investing in them and after doing maybe some side missions, drug deals and sales, small at first and then later on the distribution level. I want garages of cars that I can visit and access conveniently, viable safe houses and other properties, hell. I want the Pimp My Mansion feature from the Scarface video game so badly. It lets me live up my apparently very isolated desire to combine things like Grand Theft Auto and The Sims, but it might be hoping for a bit much. It's also not clear to me how important these aspects should be, since, like in, say, Mafia 3, they can become too grindy and risk ruining the pacing of the game's actual story if not done correctly. But making them completely optional also seems to defeat the point of including them in the first place, so I'm not entirely sure what the best way is here to strike an optimal balance. Here's one that's perhaps a bit pie in the sky given the precedence of previous games, but I kinda want two separate game modes or difficulties if you will. I want a more realistic mode that's an evolution of the systems seen in GTA 4, 5, and Red Dead 2, with a larger emphasis on doing things logically and less video gamey, for lack of a better term. Only being able to carry so many weapons on your person, tighter, heavier vehicle handling like in GTA 4, longer day-night cycles, a larger focus on the RPG elements like we saw in GTA SA 5 and even Red Dead 2, requiring more strategic management of things like breath when running on foot, etc, etc. And then I want a second mode that's more akin to the classic GTA experience, with an emphasis on arcade-style action. Looser controls for the driving, more like in GTA 5, less of an emphasis on animations being believable and possible and more of a snappy, instant responsive experience for just running around and being chaotic, or for just the people who want to play GTA 6, but don't actually care enough to sit down and play it as a single-player game, but just want to burn off a little bit of steam running over people in a pink convertible with no clothes on, which, let's be honest, is a lot of people. Probably most people who play GTA. Remember that those of us who care deeply about the lore and story are usually the exception, not the rule. The last major thing I want is a return of at least one protagonist from a previous GTA game, most likely from five, so Michael, Trevor, or Franklin. Given the actors playing them, it seems unlikely that Trevor will make a return, but it seems entirely possible that Franklin, or maybe more likely, Michael could, 
especially the latter given his known status post-GTA 5 story mode of being a film producer and Vice City having a healthy film and entertainment culture, much like Los Santos. Alright, now that I've gone over some of what I want the most, let's look at some of what your suggestions were, starting with my lovely patrons. Lydia Rodriguez says assassination missions, burglary and store robberies, and weapon modification and customization. All of which sounds really good to me. I especially want a more in-depth weapon customization system. Give me like army of two shit. Burglary making a return to would be really fun given that we haven't really seen that mechanic since GTA San Andreas, and that at least some of the rumors suggest that the game may actually have every single interior be enterable, though this may be a lot more ambitious than any of us could possibly imagine. Julian Russ says he wants a more in-depth content creator mode to make custom deathmatches, races, and the like. For him personally, he says, it has kept GTA Online alive for years, and that the stuff that Rockstar makes is fun and all, but the creativity of the community is unmatched. This is something I haven't ever really considered, but it's a good point. I've known for years that GTA Online's creator was something that had insane amounts of potential, and I have played my own fair share of custom games in GTA Online, and they were among the most fun I ever had with the game. So a larger, more community-focused online creator would be a welcome addition in my book, even if I myself never find the time to get around to using it much. Give us, like, Halo 3 levels of community collaboration and ease of communication, please. Owen Harmon had a few suggestions, so I'll just read out his bigger points. The ability of missions to be completed in more organic ways, more akin to the PS2 era games. I'm not the smartest thinker, but I can see how GTA 5 in particular was very handholdy and demanded you pass the missions like it was a movie script or else it would fail you. It would be a huge pity if the art of spontaneity is lost from GTA games for the new age. I am well aware that the power of the internet means that someone will solve an in-game mystery very quickly, but GTA 5 did an excellent job with its various hidden myths and puzzles, e.g. Infinity Murders, Mount Chiliad, Wall Markings, FIB, Flying Saucer at 100% completion. I'm optimistic there will be more of these in GTA 6, but it's something worth thinking about since the last few weeks of speculation before the solving is done is plenty enjoyable. The trailer gives the impression the new map will be expansive and highly detailed, with Vice City and the surrounding countryside being able to be visited. Seeing as GTA Online dabbled in stock car, i.e. NASCAR, and open-wheel racing car, i.e. Formula One racing events, could the map have space for portrayals of the Homestead Miami Speedway south of Vice City, and the Miami Garden Circuit further north for players to mess around in? Heck, I'd be delighted if the NFL Hard Rock Stadium was supplanted somewhere on the map. GTA 3 had the Coliseum in Espatria, but it was barely rendered on the inside. Wouldn't it be historic if the vision of an outdoor sports stadium first tried in 2001 Liberty City was fully completed two decades later? And one of my executive producers, ChuckK45, whose channel you can check out linked in the description down below, also had a suggestion, Farmer Representation. Damn right, he said. In GTA San Andreas and GTA 5, there was all this countryside with only passing references to farming. I think the truth having you steal on a combine harvester is about the most in-depth out there. Why can't we have a storyline, even if short, where you have to, say, steal seed or fertilizer for a disgruntled farmer in exchange for hiding out at his farm for a bit or something? Make the country feel a bit more alive. And then finally, I have a few suggestions from you guys in the comments on the community post I did a few days ago. The first of which comes from Volcorn22. He says, ownable trailers for cars, trucks, especially to transport boats like in GTA 5 would make sense in the swamps of Leonida, and business properties like in VC, VCS. Hell yes, I agree with both of those. Boystyle34 says, dual wielded weapons, single hand shooting, and cruise control in vehicles. This would be great, I loved dual wielding in GTA SA, though it would be cool to be able to choose to either single or dual wield instead of just unlocking always two pistols at a certain gun skill and then being able to shoot gangster style with a pistol or SMG seems like it should be a given, but we haven't actually had it for a while, so bring it back, dammit. And again, make it optional, maybe? Also, cruise control, yes. Why the hell does the Saints Row series seem to be the only one to have done this? Danton Max 3805 says, a music player to listen to radio stations outside cars, purchasable safe houses, gyms, a toggle to stop ejecting out of a car during a high-speed collision, and paramedic slash vigilante missions. Um, yes. I need a music player that lets you continue to listen to the game's radio stations when you get out of the car. And I mean, come on. With the modern world and how we use our phones and our cars, we better have something like that this time around. I mean, stuff like the Spotify integration not being in GTA 5 made some sense, since a lot of that stuff was still fairly new in 2013, but come on, it'll be 2025. If I don't have both a portable MP3 slash music on my character's phone and my actual Spotify as a selectable station in the game's radio changer, I will be very disappointed. 
Also, I would love to see the return of more side missions like in the 3D era, Paramedic, Vigilante, but I don't know how they would work in the normal single player mode logically, though they would fit perfectly in my arcade mode idea from earlier. Another of my executive producers whose channel you can find below, Ezra Hambrick, had this to say. I would like to see gunplay mechanics from Max Payne 3. I've personally never played Max Payne 3, but from watching people play it, the gunplay looks so fluid, and it looks like it would be so much fun if it was put into a GTA landscape. I agree, Ezra. I also haven't played Max Payne 3, or any of the Max Payne games, don't at me, but I will eventually, and I too have heard that it has some really good gunplay, something GTA could certainly benefit from having. And finally, Mr. Almond Chocolate Milk says we need environmental destruction, and you're goddamn right we do. Again, it might be hoping for way too much, but I want to be able to literally turn the city into rubble, battlefield style, but yeah, that might be completely insane to hope for, especially on the scale that I'm talking, given the amount of physics that would need to be calculated basically instantly, from the crumbling sidewalks to the glass fragments and decals everywhere. Possible, I don't know, maybe, but not super likely, I don't think, but we can dream. And that's about it for now. We've got a long wait ahead of us, but over the course of the next two years, I expect to cover everything I can about the Grand Theft Auto franchise, which I haven't already covered, which is a lot, as we prepare for the beginning of a new chapter in the video game industry, and what will almost certainly be the biggest game release of all time. Until then, I'm the Criminal Historian, and I will see you next time. Today's video is brought to you by my wonderful supporters on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, one of the best ways you can do it is by joining my Patreon and supporting those who support me. All patrons at all tiers receive access to all of the perks listed on screen for only $2 Canadian a month, which is less than $2 American a month. But for those extra generous few who decide to pledge at the executive producer level, you can also promote your own content. Or if you really want to see me cover a specific game for the Game Vault, you can use the new Walker Villain tier. If you'd prefer to just give a one-time donation, you can use the paypal.me link in the description down below. Today's episode is sponsored in part by my executive producers Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, and Die Castinator. You can check out Ezra's YouTube channel, Scott Games 99, where they play games such as NHL and MLB, and story-based games like the Red Dead Redemption series, with plenty more story-based games to come. Mason Collins' podcast channel, Where About Everything, where they discuss, well, everything, from zombie apocalypses to game remasters and more. Chuck K45's channel, who's working on setting up a channel all about buying farm equipment, fixing it up, and starting a new farm from scratch, and Die Castinator's channel, where they examine, review, and discuss all things diecast, from the history of the hobby to rare models and much more, with new videos basically every day, in addition to buying, selling, and trading the diecast cars. All links in the description down below. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, and please consider signing up if you enjoy my content. Even if you can't support me financially though, you can support the show by showing my executive producers some love. 